Thank you for voting us Yuba Sutter's best in multiple categories, including financial advisor and wealth management firm for the past five years. You can find more information at shawassociatesinc.com or 530-674-1150. Shaw & Associates is proud to support Community Radio. And in with me this morning, Jen Cates with the Yuba Sutter or Yuba City Education Foundation. How are you doing, Jen? I'm doing great. Thank you. Yeah. So tell me, what is the Yuba City Education Foundation? I would love to tell you. So the Education Foundation was started, gosh, we're in the decades now ago, um, as a way to remove barriers to education for Yuba City Unified School District kids. So what we're talking about is sometimes taxpayer money can't fund everything. Right. Um, And so we run into medical issues, problems, things that we could do for a child or their family to help access school and really, really access their education. And so this foundation was started as a way to support the work that the district does, support the work that the community does, but provide pretty much less loopholes, less red tape, non-taxpayer dollars. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So how did you get involved with the Uba City Education Foundation? So way back when I was actually... um, just a parent, right? Just a parent of uh, kids that went to Tierra Buena School. And I was actively involved in our site council then. At that time, Sharman Kobayashi um, invited me to join the foundation. She was a standing board member um, for the school district, Mm -hmm. Yuba City School District at that time. Had a tremendous amount of respect for her activism in the community, for her altruism, just, just Really, if you know Charmin, you know she's a genuine person who cares about kids. Yeah. And she reached out and asked me to be part of this organization. I was a little hesitant. Um, I was a teacher in Live Oak at the time. I had kids in this district, but I liked the mission. And the mission is do whatever it takes for kids and find a way. And, And I really resonated with that. And I've been involved on and off for the last 15 years. I'm currently the president um, of the Yuba City Education Foundation. I work for the district. So the two go hand in hand. And so is it, does that make it working for the district? Does that make it easier to see where some needs need to be met and absolutely make it happen. Right, absolutely. So, so my job as the director of student engagement is to oversee um, counseling and social work in our district. Mm-hmm. So, very often those are the frontline people who who recognize those needs, um, and so it makes it easy to. There's a quick turnaround um, with the education foundation. Oftentimes with other groups, it's. Um, submit this, wait for approval, in four to six weeks, we might be able to approve this. And and sometimes that just isn't possible. I was just sharing with you, um, you told me that you have kids that go to River Bend, and I was just sharing with you that, you know, just this week, actually it was just last week, we just bought a bike you know, for a for a sixth grader at River Bend because transportation is a problem. Um, parents are having a hard time getting her to school. I think she was ready for some independence and some ownership, but the family just didn't have the means to provide a bike or a scooter or anything of that nature. So we were able to buy a bike, provided her with a bike, a helmet, a bike lock, and let's get this kid to school. So, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So finding finding bicycles, is there like any other types of things? Is it mostly about just those simple needs or is it about you know, sometimes the major needs of right, the family as it, well? Right, it runs the whole spectrum. I mean, just off the top of my head, since this calendar year started, we've done an eye exam and a pair of glasses for a student in need, um, mm-hmm. no medical insurance. We've covered a month's worth of prescription medication um, for a student whose family lost their insurance and it took, it was kind of a gap of a month oh, yeah. where they okay. wouldn't be able to cover that. So we were able to pay, provide for that, insure for that um, prescription. Um, just bought sleeping bags for a fan, young family who is temporarily unhoused and staying in a motel, um, but the kids were all sharing one bed. And so I bought sleeping bags for the boys to, to move out of the bed, help them get on the housing list. They'll have housing hopefully by Wednesday this week. So kind of meeting that intermediate need, but that's a big need. Yeah. Um, paid a pg e bill for a family that was behind who'd lost power and heat. Um, and this cold snap that we experienced a few weeks ago, that was certainly um, not going to be okay. And it definitely was leading to a barrier for their kids' education. What else did we just do? It sounds like you just are constantly finding those needs and they're always present. You know, a lot of it is 
when we don't see kids at school, this is what I'm this is what I'm noticing, right? So I yeah. also oversee attendance. So when we don't see kids at school, it's reaching out to the families and kind of asking like, hey, what's going on? You know, we haven't seen Jen in school all week and, and we're worried and, and we miss her. And it's really building those relationships and rapport with those families where they trust you enough to say, you know what, our our we have one car in the family and the car battery's dead and we, and we just don't have the money right now, you know, to cover it until the end of the month bought a car battery. Right. Um, you know, we've got a family that just traveled down to Stanford Hospital um, for a specialized surgery for their youngest child, had to take the whole family, helped pay for gas cards in a hotel while they were down there so they didn't have to drive back and forth, back and forth. So it's really once you establish those relationships, and that's why I said the counselors and the social workers are so important, um, because it's really reaching out and having those conversations and saying, how can we help? What can right. we do? Um, those aren't those aren't needs that the school district can pay for. I don't have a budget in the school district to use taxpayer money to buy a car battery or to buy eyeglasses or to pay for prescription medication. And that's why this foundation is so important because it's money that we know there's a need. We know it's an established need. We've verified that need. It's right. nobody's scamming the system and it makes a difference. And sometimes it's $50 for a gas card and sometimes it's uh, $500, you know, for for the eye exam and the eyeglasses mm -hmm. and a pair of glasses at home and, and things like that. Yeah. And it seems like, you know, the school district, they, they're taking care of the kids while they're at school. And this is a way that you can make sure you take care of the kids so they can get to school. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. So in addition to that whole problem solving fund and meeting those needs, whether they're medical needs or just barriers, um, bought a lot of athletic shoes this year too. Oh, <laughs> just yeah. thinking about that. Some, some cleats and some athletic shoes, um, PE clothes, things like that that are, are definitely, you, you've got a, a son in high school, so you know that they need that, that PE sweatshirt and, and right. sweats and, and some athletic shoes so they're not running in their vans and, you know, really being able to help support families in that way. But in addition to that, this, this foundation has been able to give over $10,000 every year to graduating seniors. And we really target seniors who are probably not going to be scholarship award winners um, elsewhere. So okay. we're really looking for that student that's, you know, kind of maybe more well-rounded than just the top of their class. Maybe they've been holding down a part-time job the whole time they've been in school. Maybe they've been playing two sports. Maybe they've been, you know, maintaining a decent average while helping raise a sibling. Um, really looking for kids that are are going through some things and persevering. And yeah. boy, isn't that about every kid these <laughs> right. days. I think a lot of times we look at the GPA on how good a student is, but the uh, underlying factors of how, what's happening else around them. Right. You know, when you, somebody's able to focus on their schooling and, and to have that good GPA and do all that stuff and get those full ride scholarships that are so desired by, you know, academia and things like that and, and by sports, that's that we always see that as a great accomplishment. But like you said, those who are, you know, maybe helping raise the rest of their family and helping take care of their family, working jobs and things like that. Those people kind of get pushed aside because their grades aren't quite as as good. They don't look as good on paper. Mm -hmm. But other than that. Right. And, you know, and those people, we need more of those people, right? They're contributing yeah. to the greater good. I mean, I've looked at people who are um, volunteering in their in their community, um, you know, kids who have done Sunday school classes, who who don't have the opportunity to take every AP course there is and, and right. have that 4.5. But man, they're holding down a 3.3 and, and helping out at home and contributing to paying the bills and, you know, just being an overall good person. And so I think we what I appreciate about our particular scholarship is that we're looking for those kids. So parents out there, if you have a kid like that, kids, if you're listening, please apply for our scholarship because we do want to applaud your efforts, recognize your contribution and help you succeed at the next level. And that, that next level might just be going to community college down the road. And that's okay too. Mm -hmm. We just want to support that next step. Yeah. And so supporting that next step, we're talking about have a heart for kids, 5k run yes and so, so what, this is what's our this all about one fundraiser a year we only do one fundraiser so okay we're not asking you for money any other time but our have a heart for kids run is february 26th 
it starts and ends at River Valley High School. It's completely planned as an in-person event unless our county guidelines change for some reason, but we are moving forward. We are really looking for sponsorship. So if you're thinking 5K run, no way, Jen, I'm not running 5K. That <laughs> um, you're in a, in a position where you can sponsor, whether it's sponsor kids who can't afford to pay the entry fee or whether your business that would say, hey, we'd like to make a tax deductible donation to a to an organization that sounds pretty phenomenal. Um, our sponsorships run start at $100. Um, so we will take any kind of sponsorship. We'd love to put your name on the back of our shirts and advertise for you. But we're really wanting you to know that your tax deductible donation is going straight to kids in our community. There's no red tape. Nobody makes a salary here. There's nothing else that it's paying for except for the things that we talked about earlier. So please consider being a sponsor. And if not, come out and join us and run. It's 25 bucks for an adult, 15 bucks for a kid. It's definitely a family friendly event. Yeah. Um, and if and if your time is what you have to give, then I'd love to have you come and volunteer too. So please get a hold of me. I'm gonna post this flyer on our link to Facebook so that people can access those links and scan the QR code, but come on out and join us. Yeah, that sounds like a good time. So doing a 5K walk run, is this uh, going to be a competition base? So like, say, first, second, third, get a trophy. Is there age divisions, oh, things yeah. like that going on? Yeah, because you oh, can't yeah. have a run without some competition, right? There you go. <laughs> so for our serious runners, it is chip timed. So that means you're, you're the we hire a company that comes out and does all of the the timing for us. Yes, we absolutely have age divisions spread all the way because we definitely encourage kids to participate as well. Right. Medals for winners, right? And for the largest team contribution, I just ordered a nice big flag that they could fly or hang up in their office um, that basically states they're the number one team this year. So that's kind of a fun competition as well. So how big are the teams consisting of? You know, teams can be as small as two, right? Okay. <laughs> Maybe just your family, um, or it could be part of your school. I think every school in the district is putting together a team. So if you go to Barry Elementary, they're there. I think in the last couple of years, they've been our our predominant winners. They're they're big family community out there at Barry School. Um, but we have also had businesses, banks, local businesses put together a team. Some of them dress the same. Some of them make it fun and with costumes. And some of them are just trying to bring out, you know, all their friends and family and kids and the dog and the stroller. And they all come out just for a good time. Uh, awesome. So after all of this is all said and done and the 5K is over and we've had a great time then what with the with the funds that you've raised so then we get to sit down and talk about you know where else could we be making a contribution where else can we be providing um meeting a need that's possibly an unmet need that we haven't discovered yet so maybe it's not with the individual student and families maybe it's at the school site level maybe there's there's pieces that we can put out there um, that the school district can't cover that taxpayer money can't cover um, i think I think it's a conversation about, do we increase scholarships? Can we increase yeah. our access? How, how far can our, our reach spread? Um, but I can guarantee you that those funds are going directly, you're seeing the direct impact to children in our community locally. Oh, nice. And so you talked about the scholarship a few times about what you guys do with those scholarships. Mm -hmm. How does somebody apply for those scholarships in order to get them? Yeah, great question. So if you attend a high school in the district, um, and that can be Yuba City, River Valley, Albert Powell, or Independence Academy, any graduating senior um, can apply for this scholarship. It's on our website, and they can also access their school counselor. School counselors are a wealth of information. They know everything. So always start with your school counselor. Gotcha. Or if you have a need, you know, hey, I, I, I sit next to a kid in class, and I'm noticing they're wearing the same hoodie, you know, the last week, and, and maybe there's a need there, and maybe it's just going to take a conversation for us to help out. Um, clothing and warm clothes is probably one of our greatest um, needs. When it gets rainy, um, again, rain boots, rain um, coats, umbrellas for families who are walkers, who don't, you know, aren't able to take the bus or, or don't have car transportation. It's those simple things that maybe some of us don't think about um, that aren't accessible to everybody in our community. Right. So with the 5K run and happening and fundraising for everything you guys do with the Yuba City Education Foundation, um, how does that uh, translate for you guys in, into, you know, farther, I'm, I've lost my th train of thought, excuse me here for a second. <laughs> okay. So how does, 
you, you guys take all those funds. You guys do all these, yeah. all these things for all these students and everything that's going on. You, you have a, a line in um, being at the district of, you know, how to help these kids and things like that. If somebody else just needs to reach out, maybe they can't help with the 5K or just want to make a donation what, how do they get a hold of you in order to just make a donation? Yeah, to the- absolutely. That's a really great point. Or, or maybe they have an idea, right? Maybe they right. have an idea for me or they think, oh, I've got some time on my hands. I would like to be part of this group because I do want to point out that this foundation is not made up of just school people. Not We're not just all educators. I'm on there. Um, I, we have a people who work in banks, a local lawyer, people who own businesses in town, people who are just parents of kids who attend the district. Some of us are educators. Some people work in other capacities in the district. Um, So it's really a mixed group. This is not just about educators coming together in a side way to to raise funds and, and distribute funds to kids. This is about people in our community who care about education, who care about kids, who want to make a difference. So if you're one of those people, if it, this is resonating with you and you've got an idea for me or you want to help out or you want to come volunteer that day or you want to pay for 15 bucks for a kid who, who can't afford the fee but you want to see him participate, yeah. call me at the district office, 822-7639. Email me, jkates at ycusd.org or look on the on the district webpage for YCEF. That's our that's our shortened abbreviation. We're also on Facebook. I'll put all of that in this link um, okay. after this interview so that people can access. But I really appreciate you asking that question because sometimes it's it's not, obviously I'd love the big contributions, right? If you right. own a business and you can make a $500 donation sponsorship and it's a tax write-off for you, I can guarantee you your money is being well spent. But if you're not in that financial position to do that, but you can donate your time or you have some great ideas that maybe we should hear that would fit the mission and purpose of the foundation, please reach out and call me. I'd love to hear from you. Awesome. Jen, our time is up. Thank you so much for being in. So we have the Have a Heart for kids 5k run and walk happened in february 26th so what time does it start gosh that's a great question i think the run the gun goes off i believe at 9 a.m so we do have pre-registration the night before so if you don't want to get up early some of us have a struggle getting up early um and so we can you can check in the night before at river valley get your shirt you're going to get a shirt you're going to get a free breakfast free pancake breakfast to go from early risers kiwanis and you're going to potentially win a medal, right? Go home with the yeah. medal for being a top finisher. Awesome. Jen, thank you so much for coming in today. It was a pleasure to have you thank in you here. Thank you for the invite. Appreciate it always. This community interview is made possible by Shaw & Associates. I'm Dave Shaw, President and CEO of Shaw & Associates. For over 65 years, Shaw & Associates has been your trusted local expert for wealth management, tax, accounting, and payroll. Thank you for voting us Yuba Sutter's best in multiple categories, including financial advisor and wealth management firm for the past five years. You can find more information at shawassociatesinc.com or 530-674-1150. Shawn Associates is proud to support Community Radio.